before I start episode 10, I have a confession to make, and that is for the first time ever doing reaction videos, I somehow managed to skip an episode. So at the time of this recording, I have already seen Mob Psycho season three, episode 11. So I think I know the main plot points of this episode. I could take a wild guess what's going to happen. There were some things that were a bit jarring watching episode 11 without episode 10, but I just chalked it up to like bold narrative choices. Nevertheless, I'm sure it'll be a great episode and enjoyable. Any time spent with Mob is a good time, especially given that there's just not much left to watch. Right, Mob saves the kid. Or saves the cat, and then he's gonna save the kid, and he gets hit. And the important thing is he's okay. He's fine. The world, maybe not so much. Is the car okay? <laughs> Episode 10, Rival. And the rival is from within himself. Something's wrong. Now we get to witness the actual unleashing of this demon. From my perspective, watching episode 11 first, it was just fully activated already, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, I know partly what's coming, and because I'm assuming it's going to go well, I know it's critical for Mop's development and something important he has to go through because he's had this buried demon his whole life, things he can't accept about himself, aside of him that he's been working really hard to control. But watching this scene again, it's hard for me not to feel so bad for him. This poor kid, you know, he just wanted to go meet Tsubomi. And he's got so much, like, pent up hopes and dreams about this moment. And as an observer, it's kind of, like, to me, it seems a little bit hopeless. Like, my heart just aches for him. There's times, and I'm sure parents feel this way a lot with their kids, where you can simultaneously understand their pain and know that if you could only give them your perspective on life and you could only show them their potential and their beauty they would cease to suffer yet you just know that you can't that they just have to go through it and it's like a prayer you know you just pray that they they can maintain that the goodness that they have and seize on it and not get darkened by their pain their bad experiences rejection often which is just a function not of who they are but of who other people are i mean Savomi just is where she is mob is where he is it's it's more a timing thing than anything an age thing i've watched a lot of shows obviously Mob has a, a really special and I'd say unique place in my heart. Not in terms of how much I love him, although I do love him a lot, but there's a very particular kind of love. It's like, I adore him like he was a like a little brother or a son or something. I want to keep him safe, if that makes sense. Why in the hell is there so much traffic here at this hour? Perfect. We're going to be late now, you know. They have yeah, so many, yeah. <laughs> so much, hey, such a bigger danger earthquake? in their world right now than being late. Man, this earthquake's a real pain. Be over already. According to what I'm reading, accidents and crashes are happening all over. For no You're not going to call reason. Mob to also, check on him to see if he's alright? Most of the major thoroughfares in Seasoning City are backed up. Wait, what? I want to see those again. I want Takoyaki. I don't care. Relatable, honestly. Says an evacuation order's been issued. And on the day Shigeo was going to ask that girl out, too. Something... Anything clicking? Nothing clicking? For you, Reagan? I guess they just believe in Mob too much to think it could happen this way. Wrecking buildings. And everything else. Honestly, the more I think about it, the more I think it's such a great touch that Mob is <laughs> the final villain, <laughs> the final boss. Who else could it be with his power? I mean, they're doing a great job making him seem absolutely terrifying. As if it wasn't terrifying enough already with what we know about him. Yeah. Looks like I made it in time. He's the first to show up. You know, I had the sneaking suspicion I would find you here. So I flew over at the speed of light. At the speed of light? Damn, that's impressive. I have no idea what happened. But if you want to talk about it... Whoa, what are you... <laughs> I think it's just not registering for them. Just give how sweet Mob usually is. Good thing I've gotten stronger too. After watching you, I thought I'd better try a bit harder. Uh. One thing I love about Taro is that he has this, you? like, undefeatable hey, spirit. Nice move. Might be a little risky going over there as you are, though. Yeah, imagine you show up to the date like this. True bros don't let you go on dates in demon form. How's that, uh, getting stronger <laughs> working out for you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can only have gone one way. But I think Taro's so cool, he's one of those characters that just ends up being awesome and finds his place despite the impossibility of him ever being number one. It's not his fault, I mean, it's just like a, a rule. It's an axiom of the show that Mob is the strongest. But one of the coolest things about his character throughout the show is he seems to be enjoying himself. He seems to love who he is and what he what he can do. It's not relative to Mob or displays of power, but relative to Taro himself. He's a character who I feel completed his arc really quickly and convincingly. Since then, he's just been great. I'm really sorry! There's just nothing that you can do. I've got no choice here. I'll have to restrain you until. 
now. It's gonna take everyone one by one. Terra's the first, Ritsu's next, or other psychics are next. I think Reagan will be the final one. <laughs> the fact that he yelled ultimate barrier. <laughs> And he got annihilated in half a second. Behold <laughs> the power of ultimate barrier. I guess he's still alive, so that's something. Give it up. Just head home for the day. I mean, honestly, even though they're not winning, they're doing such a great service to the world and doing exactly what they need to do. By just keeping them out of the public, and also from Subomi. Thanks to Kageyama, I was able to learn something important. Yeah. This is the time to give it back. And I feel like they're all going to be really significant. Like, despite a loss here, he's going to lose, I know that. But he's still going to play a key role. It's been coming up a lot these days in shows between this and My Hero Academia. It's one of my favorite tropes, or plot devices. I just love it when a character has been greatly benefited or saved or helped by another character to then turn around and have the opportunity to pay it back. Just because I know how that feels. I know how good that feels. I think the, the first time I ever thought about this consciously was Metal Gear Solid 4. And now I'm getting that also with My Hero Academia and in the final season of Mob with all the people whose lives he's touched, getting an outlet for their love for him. That letting my powers to find me was actually a sign of weakness that I needed to accept who I was without any psychic powers and right now I have no doubt that's what he's trying to do yeah I think there's a layer above that where it's you accept all of it it's not who he really is but I mean he has the potential everyone does everybody has a darkness right and I think that's the the point for mob is harmonizing these elements of himself he's been very angry Acted. If I destroy those, the flowers. I can't confirm this, but having watched both of these episodes, I feel like there is something in him that's holding back. It doesn't seem like he's totally lost control. All right, so I don't know what possessed me to do this, but I just went back and watched my reaction to season one, episode five, where Mob and Teru fight. And holy crap, is there so much backstory and context to this fight that I'm feeling even more potently now. In that encounter, Mob even refuses to fight, except for his feeble little kid punches, because he's so terrified of using his power against people. It's such a beautiful episode, and Mob so astutely realizes that what Teru is doing is placing his entire sense of self-worth and value on this kind of innate skill he has, rather than who he is as a person. And his his qualities. Earlier I was saying that I love Taro for having completed an arc, and I think it happens there, basically. He realizes that there's so much more to people than just power, and Mob is his example, his kind of shining light that gets him there. What I said about that episode is that what makes Mob beautiful in that fight, and just as a character overall, is that he recognizes that value is something hard fought. You know, he's resisting the easy temptation of putting himself above others and identifying too strongly with his, his gift. He allows himself to stay humble, which in a certain sense makes him seem weaker. He's off balance. He's unsure because he's searching. He's searching for truth, and he's not tempted by easy answers. This is not Mob putting himself above anyone. This is Mob leaning into his powers. I mean, to some extent, that is how the, the dark spirit is representing itself, that it wouldn't it just be easy to slip into this? But I see that more as just a deep frustration, an existential panic that Mob is experiencing, having been in this state for so long without having gotten any clear answers. And it's kind of perfect that it's revolving around Subomi using the flowers as a symbol, one of his earliest stated ambitions that's just so out of his grasp. In a way, Subomi represents a similar trap that Terra was falling into in that episode, where she's some kind of object of personal salvation. Perhaps the issue for Mob in all this is the same issue he's helped others solve, which is identifying a personal value system, an identity that's totally in his mastery that gives him strength. The tragic irony, of course, is that he has what he needs and everyone around him can see that. Part of it is that he's so open, you know, he's so open to everything. He hasn't yet made the leap of faith to fully trust in himself as the man I know he can become. And I think that's the gift that his friends can provide, is showing that to him. It's more than just accepting who he is, as Toru said. It's like crafting it. There's an active element in it. Who's next? Don't do this, Kageyama! Not here! Can't you see there are people who still haven't evacuated? Yeah, like I said this in the next episode too, but the biggest gift they're giving to him is preventing him from doing damage. Listen! Don't let him hurt anyone. Dangerous. He might never Seek come back from that. Now. You have to get as far away from here as possible! Yeah, don't fight mob, protect civilians. <laughs> this is really an act of saving mob's soul. For you, of all people, to lose control of yourself like this. <laughs> He's human. It looks like you're as average as I am. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I love how Tara just lean into that average thing. Not only is Mop human, you know, he's a boy. He's a boy with a hopeless crush. And close off. Just like the first episode where they fought. You're an absolutely gullible softy. Fair. You're so strong on the inside, and yet you... 
his biggest enemy is himself. The first day I met you. Yeah, it was th in hindsight, it's such an important episode. You're crying out for wow, he's reaching out through the pain. Is it that right? Yeah, he's right. Mob doesn't really want this. Damn, this is so amazing. It's so hopeless, but it's so beautiful. That's love right there. There we go. That's the first first what? moment where he has some signs of What's awareness. What's going on with me right now? Yeah, yeah. Piece by piece, it's gonna it's a group effort. Everyone just chipping away, and he got Anazawa. the middle aged pencil pushing haircut again. Full circle. He tried so hard to stop me, but he let himself end up like this. <laughs> Judgy much? Take it from me. I'm average to remember. He's giving mobs wisdom right back to him. You've done enough. Don't feel like you have to think of this as me anymore. He wants to hide. Don't underestimate me, though! Because... He's still fighting. Still going. And there's the man. Main character energy. There's nothing average about him. That's the funny part. Your rival! Looks beautiful! He's never looked better, even with the hair. I mean, honestly, it's a victory. He protected the civilians, which is so critical for Mob, and he got in, even if just a little bit. He sacrificed his clothing and his hair for it. And it's such a perfect, like, full circle for Teru. I was saying he completed his arc before, but I think watching this, this completes his arc. Because he was so concerned with being above average, he was so concerned with being special. <laughs> and like, watching this, I'm like, damn, he's, he's amazing, he's unbelievably special. I mean, the outcome of the battle is the same, right? He lost to Mob. I mean, there's so many parallels in this fight from a, a material and physical standpoint. He's a totally different person, totally different character, and it's a totally different feeling for me watching him now. He let go of this identity, this sort of easy, low-hanging fruit identity of some superficial quality, allowed himself to be broken down to nothing, then looked around and asked himself who he wanted to be, largely with Mob's influence. And then he became that, in a way that's good and and principled and awake. That I think is what makes him special. What a great Come tribute on now. to Hanazawa. We've been over this, Koyama. What part don't you understand? Next is the flower shop, I think. Have you ever watched as a chicken pasta salad is yanked from off our shelf and thoughtlessly tossed in the garbage can? Witnessing a sight like that changes a man. <laughs> it's horrific. It's hey, a real travesty. I can't sell people old rice balls with a smile on my face. Okay, Deku. True hero is selling rice balls with a smile on your face. Whoa, it's that shitty little brat! How do you really feel? <laughs> ah, telekinetic helix! I don't know, I feel like if Teru can't do it, not a lot of hope for brute force. I wish I'd thought to ask him for his phone number. She showed up. Oh well. She's waiting. He'll show up. Oh no. He might show up. It depends on how long this fight goes on. It's also nice of, her, nice of her to wait there instead of evacuating. To turn his phone off. It's Mob. I'm sure he'll be fine. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's their, I think, faith in him, love for him. What now? It's Bring not it. letting them Look at this. imagine it's Mob doing it. But there's a picture. Time to go. Reagan is going to be so key. We're talking one measly Esper kid, right? It gets the six of us. How many people have made this mistake? First of all, any loot goes to us. This mission is no joke. I'll have to go on my own. I would say one good thing about skipping this episode is that people just show up and it's like a big reveal. It was a big reveal for me. Hey, you forgot your parachutes. Don't need it. <laughs> Too cool for parachutes. Wow. I mean, I loved episode 11 and maybe I would have appreciated it more if I <laughs> watched it correctly and not like an idiot. But this episode hit extra hard for me, mainly because of Teru. I think that was one of the most important episodes of the show. And I think maybe one of the ones that got me hooked. It was such a clear exploration of Mob's challenge and also his beauty. And now to see Teru be able to give that back to him when he needs it most is just really heartwarming. Part of the reason why I think this show is so compelling is it's a, a great exploration of a fundamental and critical element of life, which is self-discovery and finding personal value. And that's not easy. You know, there's a lot of false friends there's a lot of ways to get sidetracked and i think thinking about it abstractly it seems almost impossible to avoid all the traps and to get through it to a point where you're you're really free you know it just takes pain it takes living in a, a state of confusion for so long being in this balancing act between openness and self-definition you want to remain fluid and open and not not too attached to your own labels not develop false friends of identity but you also need to feel connected to yourself and have a sense of purpose, have a North Star. Mob is so much closer than he realizes. I think it's very clear to the viewers and it's clear to everyone in the show who has crossed his path. And that's the fun and beauty of this arc is they get a chance to reflect his beauty back at him. And once that clicks for him, there will be no more need for escape 
And funnily enough, he'll probably be more powerful than he, than he ever has been.